I find it useful to think of an object-orientated program as executing in an execution space. Now an illustration of an execution space is shown here. It's just an area in my mind, if you like, in which I visualize that there are a collection of objects messaging each other. Now whenever an object-orientated program starts, there always has to be the first object. And I'm going to say if this was a Windows application, for example, an object would appear and it would be Form 1, typically. If it was a console application, well, we'd have to discuss that at a later date. Now, it may be the case that this object does some processing of, in its own right, but then it wants the use of another object to do some processing for it. So it creates another object, and when that object is in existence, what will happen? The black object would send a message to the red object, and just as an aside, I've only shown these in different colours so I can refer to them in the video. Let's say that this message now from the black to the red object is such that it's telling the red object to do something to itself. In other words, change its own state in some way, maybe change its colour or whatever. Alternatively, the message could be saying, here's some data, process this data for me and return me the result. So there's essentially two kinds of methods described there. One saying to the object, yeah, do this to yourself. And another occasion saying, here's some data, process this for me and give me the results of your processing back. Let's look at another scenario. Let's say that the black object is sending to the red object the hours worked in one week and the rate of pay per hour. So the red object is able to calculate the gross pay, but it's not able to calculate the net pay. It needs another object to assist it to do that, because the other object might have details on the amount of tax that's payable and so on. So the red object would then create another object, which I've shown in green here, and it would then send a message to it, passing it the gross pay. The green object then would look at the gross pay, do all the necessary deductions, and pass back to the red object the net pay. And the red object would then pass that back to the black object. Now at this point, the green object has served its purpose. The red object no longer needs it. It's calculated the deductions, all's well and good. So that then gets disposed of. We might now carry on and see the need to produce another object. And this object might be sent a message from the red object and the purple object in turn might request for another object and send a message to it. I won't illustrate this with any more examples, but what we really can see here, we have this execution space. It gets populated by objects that send messages to each other. When the objects are not needed, they are effectively disposed of. But we have this communicating collection of objects. So what we can say about object-orientated programs is objects are created, objects are then used, and that means they send messages to one another. And we've seen there are essentially two types of messages. One message, here, do this to yourself. Another message, here's some data, send me the results of the processing of that data back. And we've also seen that when objects are no longer needed, they are actually disposed of.